man. And that's not unusual. I'd say that's, I'd say that's typical of most women's mentality. They'd rather have the money than the man. Results? We have now had a couple of generations of African American children. Now the, un the, the illegitimacy rate is something like 70%. We've got several generations of black children who don't know what a father is. They've never even seen one. If you can tell me how a boy raised without a father can be an effective father, I'd like to know how. Because I don't think fatherhood is something that is innate. I don't think it's something that you do instinctively. I think it's something that's learned. And if you haven't seen your own father treat you properly, <clears throat> the chances that you're going to be able to treat your children properly are dramatically redu reduced. I won't say it's impossible, but it's unlikely. What did they do to this country? They, they, knocked, the, they knocked the father out of the African-American community and made the blacks more easily oppressed. They're not going to march again like they did in the 60s. You won't see civil rights again. Not from the African Americans. And they've done pretty much the same thing with whites by means of the maternal presumption in divorce courts. The nation is being ruined while we fool around and embrace this nonsense about a maternal presumption. It's got to stop. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alfred Addis. This is the American Independence Hour, and I am ranting about women. I thought I was done at halftime, but actually I got a little more to say. Women need to wake up. Not because you're decent, not because you're nice, but because you are in terrible jeopardy. Right now we live in a society that is roughly, we are pushing to where we have about 53% women. You are the political majority. Hooray! Hooray! Women are the majority. Gee, things are going to change now, aren't they? Let me tell you something about political majority. When I was a young man, I went to a couple of places, Washington, D.C. being one of them, Northern Illinois University being another one, where the population at that time, was something like 70-80% women in Washington, D.C. They provided, they were most of the secretaries in the bureaucracy. And out at Northern Illinois University, and I'm talking back in the 60s, the population there, that was primarily a girls' school. It was something like 90-95% women. And this was a time when the world was a fairly conservative and seemingly moral place. I visited Northern Illinois University. You had women whistling out the window at me while I'm walking down the street. I saw women climb out of windows in their dorms to come chasing after any man that was going down the, going walking down the road. The same thing, I won't even get into the details, but much the same thing was going on in Washington, D.C. And one of the things that I've observed over the years is if you want to see a moral society, you're going to be looking for more of a society where women are in a minority rather than a majority. And I believe there's good reason for that. When women are in a minority, they are highly valued. Right? This is just supply and demand. This isn't, this is, if there's, you take a, a, an example that comes to mind, an illustration. Uh, well, I'll give, the, I'll give you the illustration in a moment. But when there are more men than women in a society, that's when you will see men treat women with care and courtesy. That's when women get to pick and choose. Right? They get to choose, let's see, which husband, because a woman has an opportunity to pick between several men as to which one she's going to have her husband. But when we have a situation as we do now where women are becoming the majority, guess what? There is serious competition among women to gather, to, to, to gain, to take, take to, to uh, I don't know, marry, take control of, take possession of, put your own language on it, the, the relatively few men. Now, if we take a look at society and we say 53% of the population is female, at first glance you're going to sit back and say, well, that's no big deal. It just means there's an extra three women out of every hundred. That's the way most people would look at it, but that's not so. A 53%, we're not, quite, we're not at that level yet, but we're approaching it. When the population is 53% female and 47% men, it's not an extra three women per hundred. It's an extra six women per hundred. There are 47 men and 53 and 53 women. There's a difference of six. What that means is that at any given moment, it's physically impossible for six women out of 53 to be in the company, exclusive company of a man. There's only 47 men and there's 57 or 53 women. The numbers don't sound like, uh, at first glance, they don't sound all that impressive, but when you look at it a little deeper and you say, wait a second, that's an extra six women out of 53. You understand? We're talking something like 10, 12, 15% of the women in this country. It is mathematically impossible for them to have a man. 
There's only 47 men for every 53 women, or we're fast approaching that point. We're talking about 10% of the women in this country can't have a man. Women are no longer in a position where they get to pick and choose. And at the same time, men are no longer in a position where they have to be on their good behavior. We are now in a position where a man can literally abuse a woman. If she doesn't like it, what's she going to do? Huh? Go find another one? Good luck, babe. Not many of them out there, are there? We are now in a position where men are in a position empowered to become abusive and women are in a position to become, um, become incredibly dependent. And not only in, incredibly dependent, but incredibly compliant. I've watched TV programs where they are talking to young girls, high school girls, who are explaining that oral sex right, is like shaking hands. It's no big thing. The girls are just routinely giving oral sex to their boyfriends. And it's not a, it's on TV. That program, I believe it was Oprah program one time talking about. It. This is back a couple of years ago. It's no big thing. I think this is a reflection of the change in demographics where women who are historically in the minority are now in the majority. I think that women are now in a position where the stress of competition between women to gain a man is so serious that they are now willing to do virtually anything in order to get that man. Now, that's my theory. I can't prove it, but to me it makes a certain amount of sense, and I, that there's an intuitive sensibility to it. Maybe you agree with it, maybe you don't. But if it is true, all it means is on top of everything else, how are women even going to maintain the illusion that there's something special about being a mom, or there's something special about being a woman? A woman cannot have sex with 20, 50, 100 guys and sit down and everybody's going to say, well, golly, isn't she just, that's the sweetheart of Sigma Chi. Women can't be. I wouldn't even say men can be it, but they, they, men can't be promiscuous routinely and get away with it and expect to come to happy endings. With a man, it's the sort of thing that is to some degree tolerated and to some degree celebrated. For well, the woman, I don't see how a woman is ever going to be promiscuous and yet expect to come to a happy ending. However, we live in a society where there are 53, or very nearly so we're approaching that point, 53 women for every 47 men. An extra six women out of 100, but that's an extra six out of every 53 women. Again, we're talking something like 11, 12 percent. The, the competition is going to put young women in this country under incredible stress. I don't believe they're even happy themselves playing the slut. I think they're called on to do it because young boys, young men, you know, what, to, what can I tell you? Uh, the human male is more than willing, uh, eager to insert himself into pretty much any female orifice that makes itself available. It's the nature of the, it's the, nature of the species. Historically, women were the break, the moral break on promiscuity, they're not anymore. Where are we going with this? You know, where can this go? How are we going to have a happy ending? I don't understand. I, honest God, can't understand how young men are even bothering to get married. If you don't understand, if you don't know your wife in this society, if you haven't known her for a long time before you were married, and you are absolutely certain that she is fundamentally monogamous, we now live in a society where you have to presume the woman that you are interested in has probably slept with God knows how many other men. I am unable to understand. Maybe I am just too old to get it. Right? But I am unable to understand how a man can marry a slut. A woman he understands has been sleeping with God knows how many other men and have any respect for. Her. I don't understand it. I don't know how they're going to do it. Maybe they can do it. Maybe the younger generation, maybe it's no big thing for them. Maybe I just don't get it. But I think that if your wife has been promiscuous as a young woman, I don't understand what's going to keep her from being promiscuous once you're married. And what are you going to do about it? File for divorce? Take her to a damn divorce court? Where you understand that if you walk in as a man, you are necessarily going to be the bad guy in the situation, and they're going to punish you and give her everything she wants, or at least that's the way it will typically work out. Now, there are people who would argue there's divorce court lawyers say, oh no, when there's when there's a real battle for custody, men have every bit as much right to get the children in the property. There's a 50-50, roughly, when there's a real custody battle, men get the kids about half the time. Yeah, when there's a real custody battle. That will cost you seventy-five or a hundred thousand dollars. In other words, wealthy men, yeah, they'll get the kids half the time. 
But for the vast majority of people who can't afford to spend $75,000 on a full-blown custody battle, Fifty thousand, seventy-five. I don't know how much it costs anymore, but it ain't given. You're not going to get a custody battle for five grand if you can't afford the fight. I guarantee they're going to give the kids to mom, and in doing so, the children will be impaired. And the moms of the world don't give a damn. Everybody knows it. Everyone knows that the children raised without fathers are going to be impaired. Everybody knows it's not a secret. We try to dance around and we talk about single parent families. Children are raised in single-parent families. See, it doesn't matter, though. All it is is you only have one parent as opposed to two parents. They try to make the question of parenting a question of mathematics. Sure, it's better to be raised in a two-parent family than in a one-parent family. But if we follow that...